Welcome to Recipe Club, where we debate the best way to cook the things that you want to eat. My name is Chris Ying. I am the co-host of this podcast, along with Dave Chang. Hello, hello. <laughs> and today on the show, we are joined by, of course, the OG Wedgie, the first member of Recipe Club outside of these two big boy Asians, Priya Krishna. Hi. Always good to see you both. Priya, I believe you have just returned from uh, a Van Wilder style European backpacking trip. Uh, your first time outside the States, just like sowing some wild oats. How, t- tell us about your recent yeah. vacation. I mean, holiday. Um, yeah, it was it was totally Euro trip. Um <laughs> I've never seen that movie. All I know is that like uh, there's like topless women and nude beaches in it. That's all you need um, to know about Europe, baby. Well, there's only That's one Euro know. movie that counts, and that is National Lampoon's European Vacation. And in every other right, right. comedy film about traveling through Europe, doesn't count. National Lampoon's European Vacation is the first is vacation as the first Chevy Chase National Lampoon's right. The OG. It's the second one. Oh. What? What's the first? Oh, the first one they go to Wally yeah. Wally yeah. World or whatever. Who are you, man? The family vacation. God. Yeah. This is embarrassing. Uh, so what were the what were the highlights, Priya? Uh, we hiked from Toulouse to Barcelona along a route called the GR10. Um, I it was really nervous given that we had agreed to go on a two week long hiking trip with my mom and her hiking group, which is just like a bunch of 60 to seven year old, 70 year old aunties and uncles. They were amazing company. Like honestly, such fun travel companions. They uh, share my taste for wanting a glass of wine and a hot shower after a long hike. And they bring the best snacks. They all filled their suitcases with Indian snacks from the Indian grocery store. So our lunches were amazing. Can I ask on this journey, did you, are you camping or are you staying? Uh, we were staying. Yeah, we were staying at like little uh, inns in all of the towns that we ended up in. And may I ask in, in the European fashion, was your mother's hiking group just nude the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> What's going yes, on with you? As is traditional. Hot zone. I have, one more, naked. I have one more question. And then I want to hear some food highlights. Did you say that post hike you enjoy a, a glass of wine and a hot shower or a glass of wine in the hot shower? Uh, if there had been an option for me to have a glass of wine in the the hot shower, I would have taken it. Hmm. But I said, and. Tomato, tomato, it doesn't matter, in or out of the shower. <laughs> as long as there's wine somewhere in the bathroom. Uh, any delicious Speaking eating highlights? Of tomatoes. <laughs> 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 we went to this tiny town in Spain that was known for their pink tomatoes. They're like this big and they're so delicious. And so at every restaurant, you just get a tomato salad that's just like fat slices of that with olive oil and salt. And I just like a plate of those tomatoes was one of the best things I ate. And then another restaurant I went to, they made gazpacho with those tomatoes. And they made basically this tomato and olive oil ice cream and just dolloped it in the middle of the gazpacho. And I have been dreaming about that gazpacho with the tomato and olive oil ice cream. It was like savory. It was so good. Gaspacho, I'm a big fan. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Someone here does not enjoy gaspacho, and that is this guy, Hot Zone over here. And uh, I'm glad. <laughs> I, I, that's a great idea. I think that if I ever served a gaspacho, I might serve it with a olive oil ice cream of sorts. That's a really smart idea. Keeps it cool. Keeps it fresh. So good. So these pink tomatoes, they were also Nick. <laughs> I'm so sorry. is a good name for a dog. It is a good name for a yeah. dog. Gaspacho would be a good name for Gaspacho. <laughs> uh, while we're doing check-ins here, I feel like out here it's it's recipe club. We're talking about things we're cooking. Uh, I feel like it would be a good time, Dave, to talk about some of the stuff you've been working on over the studio. You want to talk about your your project you've been, you've undertaken? I'm forcing myself to try to make a jalonbao every day. And wow. Uh, yeah, by hand, everything by hand, and not shooting it out like the cheaters do. 
uh, the dough and then cutting out square, I mean circles, um, doing each one well terribly. <laughs> but you said you were seeing some improvement. You've been doing it for a couple of days now. But like, what, what are you seeing? Well, yeah, I, again, this is important to note. No measuring, no measuring at all. It's not allowed. Obviously no measuring. Uh, and today my dough is quite dry. Um, but I'm understanding how I can roll out the dough with um, without with very little dexterity <laughs> in a way that works. And mm. the shaping of the the bow itself is is difficult for me. You need nimble, tiny hands. So I'm working on it. <laughs> to get all the little pleats in there, yeah. Uh, but he's been doing he he's been the whole hog. It's like you made a, a gelatinous wow. rich pork stock, mm. chilled that. Hack that up with your farce. He's been rolling these one at a time. Uh, commitment. Yeah, Why? I mean, some people. Like, this- I, I'm. I'm. I, I think I have to choose certain things. Like if I, uh, if I had the time, I'd do something like jujitsu or some some something that the tech bros do. But <laughs> I, since I don't have the time, I'm doing something that is a total. It's got to be a pain in the ass. So I've been trying to get up super early this week and last week has not been good, and or making something that is not easy to make. Priya, you ask why, and I direct you to mm-hmm. on Walden Pond. <laughs> Your answer is why. Why this guy <laughs> does what he does. Just, just refer to the transcendentalists. Uh, we are not here to talk about Xiaolong Bao. We're not here to talk about gazpacho. We're not here to talk about pink tomatoes or European hikes. We're here. We've gathered this meeting of the Recipe Club to discuss... The ingredient known as bread crumbs. Uh, Priya, do you remember when you chose this when we did the draft episode? Was this was this high on your list of of ingredients? Low on your list? How'd you end up with bread, bread crumbs? I love bread crumbs. I think bread crumbs are an easy way to make a lot of dishes better. Like whenever I have just like some nice seasoned bread crumbs on hand, you can put them on pasta. You can put them on roasted vegetables. I mean, there's, I just like, I love like adding like a salty zingy crunch to stuff. I think breadcrumbs are fantastic. Uh, <laughs> you can put them on vegetables. You can put them on pasta. What else can you put breadcrumbs on, Dave? What's your breadcrumb usage rate? <laughs> Extremely low. Extremely low. Yeah. For I think I've, yeah, I've seen more lunar eclipses than I think. I've used breadcrumbs. Wow. Intentionally as a as a textural component. As a topping. Yeah. In, in meatballs, yeah. Meatloaf, meatballs, farces mm-hmm. of all sorts. Yeah, but as a, as a topper of things, no. As a coating, I'm all aboard panko coating. I'm kind of on the same wavelength here. I don't love a... a and, and that's the rare double starch where I, I'm not I'm not a advocate for. The Put pasta it, with breadcrumbs? Uh, yeah, they, no. That's a, I, listen. That's oh, a, I love pasta with breadcrumbs. Oh my god, like linguine clams breadcrumbs. Oh, yum! <laughs> I don't know why the, what the breadcrumb is doing there. Honestly, I, the the it's the really rare instance where double starch goes wrong. I feel I, I I'm sorry, Priya. I'm going to go with Dave on this one. I just feel like linguine with clams, wonderful, two two wonderful textures, and then you just add this sort of roof of your mouth shredding tough little bit well can i ask them for you if you if you yeah. like are there any other pastas that you like breadcrumbs on are you mac and cheese with breadcrumbs like, honest yeah oh str- i'm strong mac and cheese with breadcrumbs huge mac and cheese with breadcrumbs so when you go to a restaurant then logically when they ask uh-huh. would you like parmesan you're like yeah and then do you say hey can you bring out the breadcrumbs do you add breadcrumbs to every pasta do, they don't. They don't ask to bring out the breadcrumbs. Well, that's what I'm asking. Do you love it so much that you are now asking for a side of breadcrumbs? When you go to a picnic at the beach and everyone <laughs> is trying to keep their food from getting in the sand, do you just dip your food into the yeah. sand? Do they eat it? I don't understand why linguine and clams is the re- like makes it you know unifies this dish. I don't understand. I just, I just like really, really love. <laughs> The crunch and I love double starch. I'm like a double starch in most in most well, things. Now we know. Really good. May I suggest just some more pasta? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, now we know. Next time we cook for Priya, we're, we have to have a side of breadcrumbs. Do you like seasoned oh my breadcrumbs God. or just wow. uh, 
seasoned you know, bread Italian crumbs season and or, or this always Sam's happens season. where Dave takes like he takes one opinion I have and is like, all right, well, everything I'm serving you with breadcrumbs. I guess we're just going to start calling you breadcrumb now. Uh, wait, what is your well, – you said seasoned breadcrumbs. Are you talking about the Italian seasoned oregano scented breadcrumb? My go-to is like toasting them in a lot of butter uh, and then adding like garlic, salt, lemon zest, and maybe some like chopped herbs. That's like a salad, dude. That's a, that's a whole. That's a whole other dish. That's you're three quarters of the way to a panzanella. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think we should move on. I, I don't understand what's happening. Um, but so in your cooking, Dave, no breadcrumb as topping. Breadcrumb as a what? What would you say that? What What is the function of the breadcrumb in the meatball in the in the meat, meatloaf in those farces? It's just a filler, and you don't have to use breadcrumbs. You could use. Bread soaked in milk or some liquid. Yep. But you say it's a filler. I think it dramatically improves it. Like filler makes it sound like it's just there because you didn't have enough meat. But no, I, think I actually I think difference. it's uh, if I have some kind of white bread, I prefer to use it than breadcrumbs because mm-hmm. it's you don't have to add uh, milk or any kind of liquid. Um, it to me is the better way. In fact, I made it this morning for my kids: What's chicken that? meatballs oh. with king's wine bread soaked in milk. Yeah. Instead of because I didn't have breadcrumbs, but, but you know when I I was looking for breadcrumbs and I was looking at the pantry and just staring, hoping that it would materialize. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And not one point was I thinking, oh, I have to buy more breadcrumbs because I have to put it on some pasta. <laughs> you wanted to move on. <laughs> you brought it back to this. Uh, other than topping, obviously. Coating for for fried things, wonderful use for breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Priya, are you are you also once in a lunar eclipse, or you're pretty breadcrumbs all the time with beyond beyond your pastas? It's not something I like. Will go out of my way to make sure I always have. But when I have breadcrumbs around, I'm like, oh, or do nice. you make breadcrumbs from scratch? Uh, sometimes, sometimes if we have like bread that's like getting stale, I'll just like stick it in the oven for 10 minutes and then blitz it, but not often. I love panko breadcrumbs. I think they're so good. Is pan- I feel like this is, I'm just digging myself into a really <laughs> deep hole with you both right now. <laughs> it does It does have the feeling that we're setting you up for something, even though we're not. Mm-hmm. Is panko the, sup- the supreme breadcrumb, Chang? Yeah, it's the one breadcrumb to rule them all. Yeah. It really is. And not just any panko. The best panko is something probably most uh, cooks have never seen, and that's the fresh panko that uh, you get at the top tonkatsu restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, and that makes a, a best-in-class fried product. It's not necessarily fresh, per se, but it's not the dried panko that you get at the supermarket. It's a, it's a completely different animal. And the thing, the thing that separates panko for me is that it's less of a crumb it's not crumbled it's shredded basically it's shredded bread little little pieces of shredded bread i did i had a little adventure this morning as i was reading up on breadcrumbs and i went down a little wikipedia rabbit hole and i was reading about panko and this is my favorite (laughs) these are my favorite parts of reading wikipedia there's a a fact in the production of of panko that says the bread is made uh (laughs) via cooking with electric current and not baked so that there is no crust. And I was like, that can't be true. <laughs> and I traced it. I went to its source. And there's one producer, one American producer of panko that does this, like, they just shock their dough into being cooked instead of baking Whoa. it. And based on that one video, now the truth of Wikipedia is that all panko is cooked via electric current, uh, which is not true. So if you're reading Wikipedia, you know, grain of salt. Um if you Google breadcrumbs recipes, you get 43.3 million results, which is not a ton, but I think that as a featured ingredient, you know, breadcrumbs are not really a thing. They just play a role in a lot of other recipes. A lot of those results are for homemade breadcrumbs. Um, we didn't go with any of those, of course, those 43 million. We chose from recipes you all submitted. And as a reminder, there's still time to send in your recipes to the fixer at majordomomedia.com. We're still looking for recipes for ube, watermelon, lemons, chicken wings, and flavored vodka. So send those in. <laughs> oh, by the way, I remembered. Uh, not a fresh panko is called nama panko. 
Okay. And it's not. Nama means raw. Fresh meaning not. It's literally fresh bread, but. So soft. I don't know how they get it. I'm sure there's a way to do it. And I'm sure it's pretty simple, but I have no idea how to do it. And then I don't remember what the the one that's dried, but that's the one that most people are familiar with. Um, well, uh, and while we're doing, while we're going back in time, I also have this note here that bread crumbing is a relationship sling for young people. Do you know what bread crumbing is, Priya? Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> I feel like this is what happens to, to happen to me with my wife all the time. You okay. give somebody just enough crumbs of attention to keep them interested. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. That is horrible. I wonder how that, uh. Is that uh, saying, what is it? A saying, parable, euphemism, leaving a trail of breadcrumbs? Hansel and Gretel. I, is that it? I think so. I looked at this too. By the way, if you all haven't, do you, okay, how much of the story of Hansel and Gretel do you remember? They're brothers and sisters that love each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, <laughs> not, not true. I mean, they love each other intensely. Maybe. <laughs> How intensely are you talking about here? And uh, they get lost in the woods, and uh, they have a bag of breadcrumbs for whatever reason, and then they leave it. Well, they were making linguine and clams. Yeah, they're making linguine and clams. <laughs> and I just remember there's a witch, and uh, they lost the trail of breadcrumbs. And yeah. then Arnold Schwarzenegger comes and saves the day. <laughs> And rescues them. That's all I remembered as well. Who who rescues them? Nobody rescues them. They they find their they way. They rescue themselves. Yes. So they find their way. First of all, they were abandoned in the woods by their parents because there was a famine. And the mother said, take the kids into the woods and leave them there and somebody else will take care of them. And the father reluctantly takes them out there. And they had left a trail of breadcrumbs so they could find their way home. But birds eat all the breadcrumbs. And they find a house made of gingerbread inhabited by a witch <laughs> who captures them and then tries to fatten up Hansel to eat him. And they rescue themselves by kicking that witch into the oven and cooking her and taking her riches yes. and going home. I will not be reading this story to my children. <laughs> Dude, I reread the, I read the plot summary of it and it is so – there's like even more gnarly details to think. But that's, it's, it's essentially Beowulf. It's essentially <laughs> Beowulf. Yeah, exactly. Uh Sorry for that digression. So that's 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 breadcrumbs in culture. Here's breadcrumbs in kitchen. Um, the recipes that made it to the final standoff that we sent, uh, the final final runoff that we sent to Priya, were stuffed artichokes by Kim Sloman, Italian egg rolls by Valerie Bader. That sound, th those sound good. <laughs> they both sound good. <laughs> stuffed hot peppers by Aaron Ward. Cast iron fried fish by Kelly Huang and Mary's Prudence Island Stuffies by Mary Bennett. Priya, those were your choices from the listener-submitted recipes uh, that we all had to cook this week. Mm -hmm. Which one did you choose, and why did you forsake the others? Um, I chose Mary's Prudence Island Stuffies mostly because of the name. It was just so cute. Um, I also have to say, like, I grew up in a in a clamless seafoodless environment and then i went to school in new england and discovered like clam bakes and and what are they called steamers and like that like wonderful world of of like new england -y seafood and i just like fell in love with all of those dishes like lobster rolls and stuffed clams and all of this stuff and it just i just it's like it it does something for me a nice stuffed clam and so it was the name that reeled me in and the fact that it was a stuffed clam that that really sold me. Well, would the I, I agree that's a cute name. Would it change your mind at all to find out that Prudence Island is actually a prison colony for especially violent criminals? I'm just kidding, Priya, that's not what Prudence Island is. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mary Bennett. My recipe for Mary's Prudence Island stuffies. I am from Rhode Island originally. I was born and raised in Rhode Island. We used to vacation when we were kids at my aunt's summer home. So whenever low tide came, we all went out and we would dig quahogs. We have a competition every year for a chowder and stuffy cook-off, and this recipe has been entered and done well in the, in the competition. We make it throughout the summer, and what we do is we freeze them. You wrap them individually, you freeze them, and the best time to eat them is like watching the Patriots game. 
the one thing you got to be real careful about is salt with this recipe because the boxed mixes can be very salty. That's why you got to use unsalted butter. And I would say go heavy on the butter. I added as a side note, the option of adding corn, add a spicy ingredient. The corn kind of offsets that. And the only other thing I left out of the recipe, I think, because I assumed everyone knew this, is when you're done stuffing your stuffy shells, you got to bake them. Your parents are vegetarian. Would they eat a clam? Mm -hmm. I think I've actually had this conversation with my mom. No, no, I don't think either of them would eat a clam. And the reason being they feel confused. that it's because David setting setting me up is what he's doing right now. I can see, I can see where. He's I, I mean, I think there's a healthy debate: is it a sentient animal, or is it just an amoeba-like thing without a central nervous system? There are there are people who argue that it doesn't; it lacks that central nervous system, and therefore it shouldn't count. But you know. Obviously, Priya's parents are not among those people. Um, this is how you make Mary's Prudence <laughs> Island stuffies. Basically, you take a what well, she calls for three boxes of so of much stuffing, stuffing <laughs> which is an incredible amount of stuff. Did anyone make out. it exactly to that, or did you cut everyone cut it down a little? Bit? How could you, Priya? Did Priya make three boxes? I think she did. Oh shit, she did. So you take three. You have sixteen to eighteen quahog shells mm -hmm. and you've got you basically pulse all of this stovetop stuffing mix or bell's stuffing mix into breadcrumb you cook that off with red onion celery garlic scallions uh, bell pepper and chorizo uh, you saute that in butter and instead of using water or mm -hmm. uh, for most of the water you use <laughs> clam juice or, or the the clam liquor from cooking off your clams you take that mixture, you stuff it in. Uh, if, if fresh corn is in season, you toss that in there too. You add those clams and that stuffing back into the shells and you basically bake those until they're crispy, crunchy on top and serve them with a little dab of, of hot sauce. That is the way the recipe is made according to Mary. Um, but you know us on the Recipe Club, we're never satisfied to do things by the book. So we took a spin on the Wheel yeah. of Death which you can see behind me if you're watching along on Spotify. Uh, and you'll also notice that there are some updates to this wheel that we'll talk about later, Priya. Um, and each of us landed on a restriction or constraint or creative encouragement from this wheel that dictated how we were supposed to approach Mary's Prudence Island stuffies. Of course, we also made it the traditional way. But uh, when Dave took his spin, he landed on one pot. So he had to make his whole recipe using... One pot only, one cutting board, nothing else. Uh, mm -hmm. Priya got budget, so she had to make her clams, her stuffies for less than $20. There, and, there's no way she did three boxes then. <laughs> and I did mine maybe vegan, so I was not allowed to use any. Well, do you want to bet that Priya did the full volume of the recipe or not? So it's so three boxes of stuffing. That's 15. She would need to plan. I don't think she could. I think she had to cut it down. <laughs> I mean, she could have, she, to save money, she could have just borrowed two and a half boxes of stuff oh, from our is, office. That is true. That's true. <laughs> uh, so mm -hmm. this is, we're, we're about to go through how each of us approach this. Dave, I actually think yours is closest to the original version of the recipe. If you want to talk through your way first, one part. Surely. Um, one pot, so I just use a cutting board and a knife, and I chose a um, a twelve inch or fourteen inch uh, saute pan, stainless steel. And let's see here, in terms of ingredients, I had a dozen, probably like eighteen cherry stone clams. We were not able to get qual hog. Qual hogs are bigger, <laughs> and qual hogs are, I think, famous simply because of Rosie Perez in White Man Can't Jump. It is the Jeopardy question. <laughs> And how she pronounces quag is awesome. Quag. <laughs> um, and that's the, that's the clam that is large, and the larger uh, clams are very chewy, and they make more of a chowder kind of clam. Uh, since we're on the West Coast, there's no way in hell there's going to be a quag. So we had that, had the chorizo. So you're right. This is probably, of, of the three, the most um, faithful to the recipe. The only thing that changed was um, the order of how I cooked it um, because I was only using one pan. So I chopped all my vegetables. I 
um, uh, rinse the the clam so they were expunging any sand or dirt. Uh, use the chorizo. Um, so I just chopped everything up, as the recipe says. And in, in one pan, I uh, I just sort of sautéed everything. Um, I started with the vegetables that took the longest. Um, then I added a lot of butter, a lot, a lot of butter. But before, actually, yeah, let me back up. This is now I had to remember what I did. First thing I did was I cooked the clams dry uh, in a pan. Um, and that is a very effective way of cooking any kind of shellfish. You do not need to put it in a moisture environment. You can do it literally on a griddle or hot pan. And if you've ever been to yeah. Barcelona or parts of northern Spain on the coast, that's just a la plancha. They're just cooking on a hot griddle, and it's a fantastic way. It concentrates a lot of the juices and the, the salinity, and it just is one of my favorite ways of eating shellfish. So I did that, and that also released a lot of liquid. So I'd probably say a third of a cup of clam juice. I removed those, uh, the clams, as they opened up. And I think it's also important when cooking shellfish where um, it's a multi-step process, um, like where you're going to bake them as well. Um, or even if you're just going to eat anything, whether they're the clams or mussels or razor clams or anything like that. The moment they open up, you need to remove them. Because they will overcook and then they become something that is potentially delicious into something that is a number two eraser. Um, so uh, I, I, I remove those and then I, because it's one pot, I, if it wasn't one pot, I probably would have removed the juice or cooked everything else <laughs> in another pot. So then I added, I don't know, half a pound of butter, <laughs> half a pound of butter. Um, and then I added the vegetables, um, the onions, the garlic, the celery. Um, then I added the chorizo. The chorizo I had was already cooked, so that's why. Um, so then <laughs> this is where it gets a little painful. Um, I removed the top half of the clam shells. Um, and also my yield on the clams, if you make it this way, if you're using cherry stone, is not very high which is why I think using quahogs hogs would be better because you're going to get a much better yield because they're just massive and not really appealing uh, if it's not chopped up. So I added the chopped clams to the mixture. So uh, I was a little concerned because the volume of clams seemed to get lost in it. So then I removed that back put the clams back on the cutting board so they wouldn't get lost in the in the <laughs> hold on. In, so I, I put I chopped the clams, the clams and then I put them like whoosh, I put them in the pan with and then my vegetables. And immediately you saw them and said, Oop. "Oh no no no!" So I I I took it back out, <laughs> put it back on the pan, and then I added the stuffing. Uh, I also had a, a a jar of clam juice. I added that. So um, I just gave everything a rough chop, um, and then I added corn as well. I added the corn at the end. Um, so now I have the chopped clams. I have the stuffing. It was delicious. I, I didn't know where it was going, so I then took the half. So I, I took the top half out. So with the with the bivalve muscle attached, I I use that because uh, it has a deeper well um, as my um, uh, vessel. So I basically tried to put the the volume like a, a a pinch of chopped clams back into the clams. And with a mixture of the, the the stuffing being now ripping hot, <laughs> I I used my fingers and I smashed them back into the the clam shell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was very hot. You made stuffies, uh huh? I made stuffies, and I I was like, what do I do with all this mixture? Because there's a ungodly amount left of the stuffing. And to be clear, you used. Not even one full bag or one bag of stuffing. I use one bag. Okay, maybe less than yeah. that. Three bags. No, I think maybe so I use like a two thirds of a bag. Okay, um, because just eyeing it, there was just no way. There's no way that you can use three bags. I mean, so just fair warning: if you use three bags, you're probably gonna need twenty pounds of clams, <laughs> right? Or like really eighteen gooey duck clams. And this basically. may feed the entire town. Of like Providence, Rhode Island. Of, prud of Prudence. Prudence. <laughs> Prudence <Yeah>. Island. <laughs> if you do three bags of, stu of, of stuffing. Uh, totally unnecessary in my opinion. 
And maybe the volume would go down if you did blend it. But again, I don't think that's necessary. And I'd probably say I wouldn't blend it because you, I, I did enjoy the texture. And I'll talk about that in a second. So now I, I, I I'm, I'm stuffing the, st- the clam. So they're on my, um, my cutting board. So basically I have an en- entirely too much of the farce, the farce being the mixture of the stuffing with the vegetables. And it, it, it tasted pretty good. I, I can't lie, you know? Um, so I, I now have the clam stuffed. So I was like, what am I going to do? I'm not going to throw this away and I don't have any more clam. So what I did was I made a bed of it and I put the clam shells in it like it was sand. And then I baked everything on a, on the broiler setting for about five minutes. And uh, gotta say, as much as I wanted to hate it, it tasted really good. Mm. It was delicious. Wait, on the cutting board? No, in the pan. Oh, you baked it in a pan. Oh, the same Dave, pan. that's really smart. We nestled the little clams into the stuffing in a little the sandbox, little yeah. stovetop bed. It was very adorable. Chris saw it. I saw it. Chris, I ate t- it. Chris tasted it. And what did you it was think? Very tasty. It was very, it was very, very, very tasty. I really wow. like the. Um, I like cooking the the. First of all, lots of butter is true, but cooking the the stuffing with clam juice, A plus move. I, I, I liked all of it. it and good. I think if you did it this way, regardless of it being one pot or twenty dollars cheaper or whatever, uh, as long as you're using this, and it, it, you could use chopped clams or whatnot. But if you're using fresh clams, whatever they may be, I would chop them up and I would not mix them. The one change I would do to the recipe is. I would not mix them into the stuffing. Mm-hmm. I would definitely put the bottom part of the shell. I would put it at the bottom. So when you do eat it on the half shell, you're getting the farce and then you f- like get that chewy texture of the clam at the end. So you know that you're eating a clam. I'd also argue, I don't know if I chop the clams then next time. I'd probably just leave the clams in the shell. Mm-hmm. There's no reason not to even chop shuck it. Them out. They, so th- again, this is the recipe. Quahog, you have to chop them. So at following right. the recipe, I would say there should be a note for anybody that's attempting to make this. If you are using any other clam, do not chop it. Leave it in the shell like it's Clams Casino because effectively that's mm. what this is. And I yeah. think that's going to be easier. And I if if – because I do think people should make this. This is a great – Hey, I got friends coming. It's a great hors d'oeuvre. Everyone's going to enjoy it. It's tasty. It's simple. And if you're by the ocean and you're at an Airbnb or something, like it's a great way of making something that's simple and tasty. And you don't need to use chorizo. You could do it without. If you want to add bacon, you could do that. You could have added fresh parsley. You could have added a lot of different herbs. Um, and if you didn't have stuffing, I think it, you could have just done it with the vegetables. Anyway, um, if you're using normal clams, cherry stone, little necks, I would not chop them up. I would leave them in the half shell, and then I would put the farce on it. If you are going to do that, I think you do need to puree it, which is why you would get more of that clams casino kind of thing. And if you are going to do it, I would double the amount of butter because you're not going to get that brulee setting if you put it in the broiler if you do mince it up. So there's a lot of things I think are, are different if you're not using quahog clams. All right. So that is the one-pot method. Uh, of making Mary's prudent salad st- stuffies, I think delicious recipe. Either way, um, Priya, you had a budget. I'm curious to see how you did with twenty dollars. So right off the bat, I feel like clams are going to set you back. What, Chang? Clams are probably about twelve ninety nine, thirteen dollars a pound. <laughs> Fresh, three boxes yeah. of stuffing. That is two trees. That is correct. It'll get you about eight clams. Yep. So were you able to make, first of all, Priya, I mean, the question that we'll want to find out at the end of all this is, were you able to make, you know, the similar size portion of of this clam dish for $20? Yes, I did make the portion for about 18 bucks. And this is how I did it. So (laughs) (laughs) isn't that how TikToks go now? Follow so, me on my okay, days. guys, this budget. is my stuffed clam, and here's <laughs> Follow me on my days at Recipe Club Wedgie. First, I wake up in the morning, and I, yeah. and I thank God for being alive. <laughs> Go ahead, Priya. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, the clams was obviously a huge issue. Um, I was like, I, I know I can buy uh, 
cl- like I can buy canned clams, but the question is, how do I get the shells? And I considered a couple of methods. I was like, I could try foraging for them, but I was about to leave on vacation. <laughs> what, 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 I was what, like, this what would may not work then, out. What, what, you mean like go to the beach and find empty clam shells? Is that what your plan was going to be? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. That didn't work out. So then I was like, let me just call local restaurants and see if I can have their leftover clam shells at the end of their night. I called like 10 restaurants and nine of them were like, no, that's <laughs> ridiculous. I, I like I didn't tell them it was for a podcast. I was just like, I'm making stuffed clams and I need shells. Um, <laughs> like, like I just got so I it was people were so confused. I got a lot of no's. Then I called the Shaking Crab on Fifth Avenue and a guy named Sam picked up the phone and I was like, hey, I need about uh, 18 just like clam shells. Can you collect them from customers who order the clams and keep them for me and I'll pick them up tomorrow and like wash them and I'll pick them up tomorrow. And And Sam said. He was like, yeah, okay. (laughs) Ugh. <laughs> Hold on, really. Sam quick. calls me uh-huh. at the end of the night, and he's like, "Hey, I got your clams, and I not only collected them, but I like, uh, like boiled and cleaned them to make sure they're like good for you to use." And I was wow. like, "Oh my god, Sam! Thank you. You're a gem." Um, went to the shaking crab after work, picked up the clams. They were in like in great shape. Um. So I had my clamshells. Does this mean that, that was, I feel like the, Does this mean we're imminently going to see an article in the New York Times celebrating the Shaking Crab restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> is this how you get featured in the New York Times? I mean, in a, in a weird way, Priya, this is like a horror movie when someone wakes up with like a different left arm because that's been sewed onto them or something. It's like you have you have no idea who ate your clam. No idea what kind of individual that was. Could you have been cr- a really cool celebrity. Yeah. I think Priya's maybe haunted and cursed now. <laughs> oh, that's what you're going. The it's bad the clam. The clams. Yeah. Hold on, before we continue, what would your answer, Chang? Let's say you're working the line at a restaurant and you get this phone call. <laughs> a, a a woman calls you and says, "Hey, I need your clam shells." You know what I would do? I'd say, "Hey, hey, yeah, hold on one second. I'll get right back to you." And I'd put it on the receiver, and I wouldn't hang up. And I'd be like. <laughs> Just leave her. Just leave her. leave her on red. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that's what nine out of the ten restaurants did. I was like, "You're crazy." Except for Sam. <laughs> Hold on. I don't. Without you, don't have the name. Can I collect your potato sca- scraps? <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Have, but especially, it's not like I'm going to compost them. I have a project. It's just like I have a recipe to cook at home, and I need your clam shells. Without, I mean, don't don't name names here, Priya. But like, did you seek out seafood specific restaurants? Yeah, yeah, I did. And then I started just seeking out any restaurant that had clams on the menu. Um, I started with seafood. Then it was just like I called like an Italian restaurant that sold like a clam pasta and oh. asked them. <laughs> so many breadcrumbs with so the clams. Many breadcrumbs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you got your your cleaned, boiled clam shells. Were they big ones, little ones? And they were like medium-sized. Um like, and I can't tell you how nice Sam was. Sam, like, told me how big the clamshells was, where he sanitized them, he washed them, he put them in, like, a nice bag for you me. You know who this Sam was? Like, Sam yeah. Sifton, moonlighting at that. <laughs> this clam shack. Sam. Sam. <laughs> this guy is so nice to me. <laughs> All right, so you had your Sifton clamshells. Um, and I cleaned them again at home just to be safe like just like soaked them in boiling water like washed them just you know to be a hundred percent sure no curses uh (laughs) then i went to the grocery store and so uh i had to write down everything i did because i did a bunch of stuff that was different okay so uh i bought canned clams and i found a variety that was packed in clam juice so i did not need to buy clam juice separately so that was clams and clam juice. Instead of stuffing mix, I was able to find the equivalent amount of ounces in garlic, garlicky breadcrumbs. 
So I think it was like three boxes of stuffing is like 18 ounces. So I found like 18 ounces of breadcrumbs. I found like a thing for about three bucks. Um, then uh, instead of chorizo, I was thinking I would get bacon. But man, inflation is crazy. Bacon <laughs> was more expensive than I thought it would be. Um, and then next to the bacon, there was a packet of hot dogs for one dollar. <laughs> one dollar. Ooh. Um, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> this is a truly a horror movie. I mean, this is this is a horror movie. Oh, Jesus Christ. Priya's committing acts of violence because she has no what? control over herself. What? She, okay, just to be clear, there's a there's a there's a little misdirected there with bacon that we were we were sitting here thinking, oh, maybe she likes bacon. To be clear, she replaced two links of chorizo with a dollar pack of hot dogs. <laughs> I mean, dark times, man. Dark I mean, you could have bought bacon Chari- for th- four bucks somewhere. Bacon was expensive. You, you um, could have done. You could have gone to the the hot food bar at Whole Foods and taken two strips and put yeah. it in a box. <laughs> There's a lot of things you could have done. I'm just saying the, the okay. move to a hot dog. Hey, more power to you. Incredible, incredible. Okay, sorry, hot sorry. dogs. I love it. I love it. That okay. was not where I thought thank, this. Thank this, you, Chris. This thank is not you, where Chris. I thought it was going. I like this, this, I truly... this entire episode, I'm just getting shit after shit. I'm just no, 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 like, no, 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 no. We're celebrating show. your Everything. resourceless. Come it on. Was just, it was just a. It was a very strong. It was a very sudden <laughs> left turn. I was sitting in the back seat, playing on my my Kindle, not paying attention. Mom was driving up front, and then suddenly there was a very sharp left turn, and I slammed my head into the window. Is all that happened. C- carry on. Um, and then I was like, oh, maybe I can buy like those packages of like pre-cut mirepoix, uh, to have like the celery and onion. And what I realized actually is that just buying the whole vegetable is often cheaper than buying like these pre-cut versions. Like I, like, I feel like a lot of people buy stuff, like, I feel like this is just like a good tip, like just buy the whole vegetable and it will be cheaper than buying like the whatever pre-portioned stuff they sell in the grocery store. So I was able to buy a whole pepper, uh, an onion, uh, celery, and like all that jazz and stay under budget. I also went to a grocery store where I knew Seth has a account that like he's got like coupons. So that was able to save a couple cents here and there with Seth's coupons. Um, uh, What else did I do? Okay, I think that's it. And then I it added up to about like $18.26 in the end after they'd applied my savings and and all of that. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm on budget. So uh, from there I went home and, you know, cleaned my clamshells again. Uh, and then what did I do? I followed the instructions pretty much. Like I sauteed, I like – chopped the hot dogs into like like one hot dog link into like teeny 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 tiny pieces um sauteed it sauteed all of my aromatics the celery what's whatever um then i added the breadcrumbs and clam juice uh season that um and then i shoved them into the clams Worked great. I put a little dab of butter on each, uh, baked them in the oven, uh, topped them off with uh, paprika and hot sauce, and a little bit of uh, lime juice, and uh, they were really good. I ate like 10 in one sitting. Like, they were really, really good. Uh, did You treated the hot dogs the same way we would have, you would have treated the trezo? Equal treatment for hot dogs? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, all they did was just add like a little bit of smoke. It was sort of like my paprika became smoke paprika. Um, <laughs> so I, here's here's the thing. I applaud the effort of going and getting the clamshells from the restaurant, even though it is whew, cuckoo. Uh, I, I think that I, 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 what I, what do I want, what I want to extract here is, if you're going to do this dish on a budget generally and you don't, you're not feeling like super beholden to the $20, what are your sort of big takeaways from, from doing this on a budget? Um, 
the can canned clams and juice were totally fine. Obviously, fresh clams would be better, but I feel like you know tin seafood can be a really great way to make this stuff work. Uh, you do not need to buy three boxes of stuffing mix if you're making stuffed clams. Just buy breadcrumbs or just use your own bread. Um, and like the whole vegetables thing, like really just buy a whole clove garlic, a whole, whole thing of garlic, a whole bell pepper, um, chop it up finely. That's going to save you a lot more money. Also coupons underrated. They can save you, you know, when your budget's $20, they can really, they can really help. And the guy, the lady at the grocery store was also so helpful because I was bringing my stuff and I was like, I have a $20 budget. So we need to make sure I don't exceed $20. So she was like ringing me up and she was like, all right, you got $6, you got $5. Like she was, I don't know, just people, this, this is a really lesson in like people were really nice. They had no idea what I was doing or why I was doing it, but they were just willing to help. There, I, I'm, I'm sure Sam is a big recipe club fan. Don't lie. Come on. How, how much was the bacon that was too expensive for you? That's what I want to know. I think it was like five bucks, five or six. The thing bucks. is, if it was any more than three dollars, she would have broken her budget. Well, I can I, I can I give a suggestion? Did it cross your mind to maybe use bacon bits? It did cross my mind to use bacon bits, and I couldn't find them for that amount of money because I was I it, that that exact thought crossed my mind, Dave. And I literally had this thought where I was like, "I'm going to tell Dave I used hot dogs, then I'm going to tell him the bacon was too expensive. Then he's going to ask me if I used bacon bits." Wow, I really, I really well, here's know this is. man. Here's another life hack: a lot of grocery stores will let you open a packaged item and buy it in bulk, so you could you could have just asked for two tables. I'm just kidding; you can't do that either. Um, I think you get props for being a scavenger. Again, preparing for Armageddon. A literal freegan. Um, I find that to be deeply disturbing simultaneously. <laughs> um, but again, if someone's going to be competitive and make sure that they're going to win this, it was going to be Priya. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, no question. <laughs> I, I, I have some problems with the hot dog. I just find that to be horror, horror like. Horror why? Shot. Like why? What's what's so bad about that? Like it just added smoke. It's like, I. What kind what of smoky hot deal? dog? <laughs> the smokiest hot dog you buy for a dollar over there. <laughs> I, I think that I mean, I don't know if it serves the exact same purpose as chorizo. I think is the is the thing, like a hot dog. Yeah, of course. I'm always going to choose chorizo over a hot dog, but. I was on a budget, and hot dogs were a dollar. It was a good. You know what you could have done? Pepperoni, pepperoach, <laughs> pepper, or even better, I know where you could have done this, and it's it's not necessarily chorizo, but you can get one for seventy five cents. Slim Jim, <laughs> chop up a Slim Jim, snap into a Slim Jim, Priya. You can I, do it. <laughs> I I actually did think about doing um like a little beef jerky. The beef jerky at the grocery store also expensive. Like well, Slim Jim is not beef jerky. Slim Jim is highly processed. You could have, you could have, you could have stood outside of pizzerias and asked people if you could have some of your pepperoni. <laughs> Can I take some of your pepperoni off your plate? <laughs> I actually did think about that because Seth ordered a pizza and he had pepperoni, and I was like, "Is this?" I would have counted. Is that. this that in would the have rules? Fine. Nah, I, would have. I mean, and I, I wasn't think sure you would have broken the rules. Broken, you would have won the whole year had you done that. See, it's just you if you just, had just if you had gotten his pizza before he got to it and snaked the pepperoni off, or if you just were like, "Hey, do you need all that pepperoni?" It's just to random people. If you'd done that, I think this would have been like F one in your max for stat. And there's you already won the whole season. There's no way we could catch up with you. <laughs> you just stood outside wow. of pizza places and asked people for their pepperoni, implying that they didn't need. It, uh, <laughs> but again, kudos to the clams. Yeah, kudos to the clams. Maybe a subtraction for the hot dog. That's all. Uh, my restriction for this recipe was vegan, so it poses a pretty obvious problem in that I can't use clams, uh, nor could I use stovetop stuffing because I. Priya, Priya, he's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Just give it your heads up. Listen, there's <laughs> listen. I'm in some trouble here. Okay. I may have got I may have I may have gotten a little lost. I may have lost my way a little bit. But there are some redemptive qualities, Dave. Even you can't deny that. I uh <laughs> couldn't use clams, couldn't use stovetop because stovetop has chicken broth in it. And um the third oh I couldn't use chorizo. And the third, fourth major problem I was faced with with making this 
uh, recipe vegan is that I completely forgot this was a breadcrumbs recipe. <laughs> uh, as we were uh, leaving for the studio, Priya, he's like, oh, my God. This isn't a clams recipe. This is a breadcrumbs recipe. <laughs> oh, no. Chris. So I, I completely, completely, completely lost my way. Um, here's my process. I, I've gotten vegan, I think, once or twice this season. And the thing that I've really wanted to avoid, and the thing I really hate when cooking for people who are vegan or vegetarian come into my house, is just, to, is just to give them mushrooms by default. I really, I think it's like, it's kind of a bummer right. to be a vegetarian or vegan and everybody's getting their thing and you just get mushrooms. Like, I love mushrooms, but I just think that there are other ways of doing it. So I had avoided mm -hmm. doing mushrooms for any other ones. But it became pretty apparent pretty quickly that if I was going to substitute clams, I needed to use mushrooms. So for this, for this, for the for the umami part of it, for the texture part of it, I, I went with mushrooms. I went with uh, king trumpet mushrooms, and so mm -hmm. I took the the caps off those mushrooms and I diced them into little into little cubes because I was going to basically saute those first until they were you know almost chewy to kind of emulate the texture of what chorizo would have done in this thing. Then I sliced the the stem, the stalk of the mushroom into, into little rounds and scored those so I could fry them into little clam-shaped mushrooms, little chewy umami uh, little bits. So I did that on the side, seasoned those with savory salt and, and just let those get a little crispy. Um, for my farce, again, I completely forgot that uh, this is a breadcrumbs thing and... I remembered this really delicious dish I had at a uh, Toy San Chinese restaurant in San Francisco, which were these big ass, like, um, you know, clams stuffed with vermicelli noodles sauteed with, you know, soy and, and cilantro and, and chili and all these things. And then there was, you get this big ass clam stuffed with this. So I, I immediately went there because I was going through our, our, our pantry at the studio and I found this little bag of, um, Vietnamese vermicelli sheets like these are the ones that uh, you can get these aren't these aren't like the noodles that you get in the in the boon or anything like that they're I mean how do you describe these chain they're kind of like little squares that you can rehydrate and they're just kind of like yeah little little squares of noodles that I forget which dish you eat with these so I found those I rehydrated those again I forgot this is a breadcrumbs recipe so I rehydrated these little vermicelli squares oh, and I no. and I chopped them up and I, I basically sauteed those mushroom caps with garlic. He's stalling, Priya. I'm just telling you what I did. <laughs> garlic and ginger and chili and these uh, and cilantro stem, soy, uh, a little sugar, and these um, little noodle sheets. And that was my, my farce. I, here's the part where things also went off the rail, Priya. Dave, who was doing his work in the kitchen behind me, uh, for reasons he promises weren't sabotage, said that it would be fine <laughs> to serve vegans a vegan dish in a clamshell <laughs> so long as there was no clam in it. Because I read a paper by a QAnon scientist <laughs> said it's okay. <laughs> so as I was making my farce, I was, I was with my, my, oh, I also threw, I threw some enoki mushrooms in there too because we had some in the studio. Uh, so as I was making my farce and I was frying up my mushrooms, Dave arrived with his half of his cleaned shells. So okay, some of them had like, I think you had some tops and some bottoms. So I pulled the, I cleaned the, uh, the foot out of them, rinsed those off and then had some clam shells that used to have animals in them, but no longer did. Hey, we all came from stardust. Okay. <laughs> so it's oh, all the same. No. Some stardust shells. <laughs> And I want to get to this, and I'll, I want to get to this debate in a second because I want to hear your take on this, Priya. But basically, from there, it's straightforward. I took one little piece of of you know mushroom clam, put it, in, uh, nestled it into each little shell, topped it with my vermicelli farce, and then uh, threw it under the broiler to get a little bit of uh, brown crispy on top. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were really delicious. At the end of the day, they had no breadcrumbs whatsoever, but I thought they were good. And I think I tasted them, Priya. I think they were probably one of the most delicious things Chris Ying has ever made. <laughs> Can't tell if that's wow. a compliment or not, but it was. They are very good. They are very. They were. Good. They were. They tasted very Asian. That's what I remember telling you too. <laughs> he did say. He said. He said a different word, but yeah, they were very Asian. I Asian defied them, um, but there I, was no. I wasn't getting that thing you get when you um, 
eat linguine and clams, you know? There was no textural component that reminded me of breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. That Priya, do you agree or disagree that there would have been avenues for him to use an, a, a vegan breadcrumb? Oh, I could have just used breadcrumbs. I should have just – if I had just used yeah. breadcrumbs, this would have yeah. been the same recipe. However – yeah. I don't think it would have been quite as delicious, but still. Also, Priya, isn't it sort of awesome right now to know that no matter what happens, we're not coming in last place, you or me? <laughs> we don't know that. I actually, that, 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 thought literally, that thought right? literally crossed my mind. Exactly. It's so but, wonderful to know that, like, again, I don't know why this this image popped through my head, but um, – Christian and I are being chased by a bear, and I fell down. I don't have to be the fastest person <laughs> in the world. I just have to be faster than Chris. Whatever, and uh, that's what it's happens. Just, so this feels guys, so good so right you now. You guys got immunity in last week's challenge. Therefore, I'm the only one playing for my life. I'm so happy right now. This is great. Here's the here's the here's the relevant debate. I want to okay. So putting aside putting putting aside every, all of the scoring, putting aside recipe club, Priya, how do you feel about? If the if you can serve food to a vegan person in a clam shell, I just I'm just thinking about my parents, and I don't think my parents would eat food out of a clam shell. I mean, that's all the answer you need. Let me, I mean, I can't argue. I'm not a vegetarian. Or I vegan, also so. can't believe that you let me like Jedi mind trick you. I was like, he's hundred percent going to sell me out on the show. One thousand percent. And here it is. Um, I could have done it on little spoons, you know. I if if I or I think, in the or in mushroom caps. No, I wouldn't have done that. I hate that. <laughs> here's the here's the thing. If I were if I were actually serving this to a vegan or a vegetarian friend, I 100 percent would not have done that, knowing that we weren't doing it in the studio. You know what he could have done, Priya, in a puri puri shell, right? In a pani puri shell. Pani puri. Pani puri. Yeah. Right? Pani puri shell would have been really smart. Right? Actually, that's a great idea, Dave. Yeah. Why wow. is that really smart? You don't eat the clam shell that you're eating, but it represents no, but some it, like, of the. It yeah. looks a little bit like it. So anyway, I, mean, I feel I like it would have been in many ways with, even better. I didn't do it with a pani puri shell. It's a good idea. <laughs> Here, good t- idea. I'm giving you my idea. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I mean, yes. If for for all things vegetarian. Do something that that Indian people do is a good good track is a is a good. I method. mean, we had masa in the house. You could have made a little sopes type shell as well. I don't think we had masa at that time. It came after. Well, you could have made one. <laughs> it's true. I could have nixtamalized some corn and ground some masa to make a sopes <laughs> shell, but I didn't. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I just I used these little clams because I got I got stuck on this other idea about these stuff clams. I really like. Oh, exactly, good one. Uh, yeah, I could have done a lot of things, guys. I didn't. I didn't do a lot of things. <laughs> you could have taken a walnut shell. I could have gotten a lot. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make fun of the idea of giving a pani puri, then I think that you could have taken a walnut shell and 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 put the that farce in there. That's true. A little walnut shell would be a good. It would have worked. It could. I could have also just done little spoons. <laughs> but I didn't. I used the clamshells you gave me <laughs> to stuff them. <laughs> what is your rage them. factor right now? I mean, it's a, it's less rage, rage and more regret about having turned down that law school that I got into all those years ago. <laughs> I could just be, I could be listening to this podcast. <laughs> uh, so that was my my vegan. Here's here's the one thing. Here's here's the one saving grace. It was vegan, <laughs> it was, and it t- it tasted really good. It was delicious, yeah. and it really was. I yeah. think the best thing you've ever made. <laughs> Uh, so that's now you've now you've all heard the three approaches we took to Mary's Prudence Island stuffies, and now we get to the part that uh, I'm dreading because there's a bear on my tail and I have fallen down, <laughs> tripped over a, a tree branch, um, and Priya and Dave are running away. We're going to change the scoring a little bit here on Recipe Club, um, rather than doing the the way we've been doing it. Uh, <laughs> we are going to take the power out of our hands. And we're going to put it into that production booth over there where today I think we've got three people. We've got, uh, you know, Corey and Victoria in the booth. And they are going to, I assume they already have decided on a first, second, and third place for this episode. All of those will get converted to scores in a Formula One style uh, system that we have yet to develop. And um, we will we'll update all of this. this the, the reason we're doing this, by the way, is just like, the, the scoring system we had obviously was 
a little a little people were complaining a little skewed if you if you did something like forget it was a breadcrumb recipe or say use some frozen Trace onions, would have gotten a zero i would have gotten a zero yeah. and it'd be impossible to climb out of this hole um so instead we're changing the system and you know do you have if these guys give me a fucking last place i'm gonna walk <laughs> out of here you have your results okay he's giving me a one second mark I mean, we're making a podcast. Honestly, like, I'm more, ups- I'll be more upset about this than if you guys gave me a zero. <laughs> okay. He is, they, do not let this influence your decision out there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the jury is deliberating. Dave making threats of walking out should not be taken into consideration. The jury will, sh- will strike that from the record. Uh, in, in, in the meantime, I'll give a, a quick update on the um, season long standings, which s- still hold here. I think you know and Gabby have have adjusted the scores here. So in first place for the season is still John DeBerry. Second place, nipping at his heels, Dave Chang. Right behind that, Brian Ford. In uh, fourth place is me. In fifth place is Rachel. And in sixth place now is Priya under this new scoring rubric. I think this has all been updated to reflect what happens uh, who has the most first, second, Doesn't and third matter what place, place I'm in. I'm not winning anymore, so what is, what's the point of trying? Freya looks very troubled that this new scoring system has put her into the bottom of the list. Uh, Priya, this does also like gives not, you... Does it not include the... I guess it doesn't are, include this latest. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. No. Go, I'm gonna go through yeah. this and figure it out. But also, it, it, there are elements that will allow you to catch up very quickly if you, you know, which I'm sure it's going to happen. <sighs> <laughs> All right, you know, what are your results starting from third place? All right, so uh, we have a split decision this time. So we've got <laughs> oh, already we have a split decision of the <laughs> first Jesus episode. Christ, man. Victoria scores at Yang third. Screw Dave you, Victoria. Second place, Priya first place. Corey scores at or you know scores at Yang third place. Priya second place, Dave first place. I see you, Corey. And then Corey for the winner. <laughs> Scores at Ying third place. Dave second place. Priya first place. Priya wins this episode. It's fucked up. Um, wow. God damn it! You're not sixth place wow. anymore. I'm in sixth place now. <laughs> so that is a that's a that's a first place medal victory for Priya Krishna with her hot dog freegans hot dog freegan stuff. <laughs> this just gave guys. me such flashbacks when I used to do debate they would say it's a split decision. Like, you know, when you had a big debate, they'd be like, it's a split decision. It's a two one. And then they would do a long pause like that. And then, then you'd find out who it was. And that was, that was the most agonizing 10 seconds of my life. Oh my God. <laughs> That's <laughs> same thing happens in real sports. <laughs> for though. Yeah. For, for those that want to comp how and what I am now, uh, if you watch last season's NFL football season, you saw the San Diego Chargers choke completely, blowing a 35-point lead in like 10 minutes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's me. <laughs> you coughed it no, up. No, Dave, you did up. so great. Your clam sandbox was inspired. Thank you, Priya. But listen, now with this uh, new new judging format, you don't have to be nice to me anymore. <laughs> I mean, listen. At the, at the end, of, at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, listen. I, I, will, I will say this. I forgot I was breadcrumbs. <laughs> I also served it in the husk of an animal. <laughs> I served vegans the skeletal remains of an animal. I understand why I got third place. Although, fuck you guys, Dave. While the the stuffing sandbox was very nice, I think you you you're. You suffered from the, in this episode from the task being the simplest of the three tasks. And Priya <laughs> dumpster dived <laughs> to her way to victory, okay? Like, she put the fucking effort I in. I mean, she put the work I in. I, listen, the, I, the, the results, only pain I had was, you know, burning my fingers and my soul. <laughs> the results all make sense. The only pain I had was revealing my <laughs> stupidity to everybody who listens to this podcast. Uh, the next time Priya's on the show... There will be a next time. We will be cooking with cauliflower. There are a number of recipes from for you to choose from here, Priya. Uh, I'll read them off now, and you can tell us which one you've gone with. There is a cauliflower Manchurian by 
Shalu M, just Shalu M, German cauliflower soup by Riley Elfert, roasted cauliflower and chickpeas with herby tahini by Catherine Cunningham, roasted cauliflower, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> herby tahini got me so sad. Roasted- I know, I know, I know. Same, <laughs> same, Chris. <laughs> I was like, immediately, no. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Cunningham, I think you've submitted quite a few. I really appreciate you. Irby Tahini killed us, though. Roasted Cauliflower <laughs> au, gratin, au Gratin by Emily Dube Gray. Gobi Kima Mutter. Ma- how do you say this? Priya? Gobi Mutter. Kima Mutter, Mutter. By Abhishek Gupta. Uh, Gobi Musalam by Kavita Chopra. And Classy Vegetable Casserole by Mary Bennett. Is Mary Bennett also from Mary's... Prudence Island stuffies, Mary. What do you think you're doing here? Uh, those are those were your your cauliflower options. I know Priya, you had specifically said you don't want to cook cauliflower as a health food. So which one are we going to be preparing next time you're on the show? I chose the gobi kima mutter. Okay. Uh, so next time we're with Priya, we'll be preparing the gobi kima mutter. And we will be doing it both according to the original instructions and by these by by the wheel of death constraints. And uh, I know we're running a little long, but I wanted to run over these new ones for Priya and for anybody who uh, hasn't been listening to the last couple of episodes. We've updated the wheel and we've added some things to it. So first of all, you'll see right here we've added a wild card slot, Priya, meaning if you land on this one, you can choose your own adventure wherever you want whichever one you want to pick under 20 minutes is still on here fusion Mm -hmm. means that uh if you land on fusion the winner of this episode meaning you priya will get to instruct the person who lands on fusion to make this recipe and fuse it with another culture of your choice another cuisine of your choice Nice. double taxation means you need to take on two constraints from the wheel Okay. Uh, Doomsday has replaced pantry only, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, we've added a microwave only category, meaning you've got to do the whole thing using only the uh, magic box power steamer. Healthy, we are saying, is going to be either keto or. It's up to the winner to decide. Yeah, which, which and sort of. On the budget, you can choose the budget. Yeah, price. and so on budget slash lux, they're now the same wheel uh, uh, thing. And you're, again, the winner will get to choose whether it's budget or lux. And the price. And the price. Handmade is one element of this recipe, subject to, again, the episode winner's decision. Has for, to be made completely from scratch. For example, you could have been Dave, and you have to make chorizo from scratch. Yeah, or butter from scratch, or whatever it is. Uh, God mode means you get to pick everything for everybody. Uh, slow cooker has replaced one pot. We're just going to use slow, slow cookers. And veg is, again, up to you, Priya, whether you want to tell instruct somebody whether it's vegan or vegetarian. So those are the new options. Lots of, lots of possibilities for carnage here. Uh, I'm going to give you a spin here, Priya. Okay. Do you want me to spin or Chris to spin? I think e- either one. Either one. Either one. Chris, go for it. Around and round we go. God, this is like, this new season is really stressful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's slowing down on... He- oh, shit, it went backwards. To what? <laughs> doomsday. I think it's going to stop. We can't let it keep going, right, Dave? What are we doing? Okay, it's on Doomsday. So that Almost means... Almost double taxation. You've, wow. got, you've got to make the uh, your cauliflower dish using only shelf stable ingredients priya and that i think excludes uh, that's going to be hard I, how does she do that i'm no sure she can produce. freeze she can do freeze dried cauliflower i'm sure that exists actually then it's pretty easy then yeah freeze dried peas uh go ahead dave what 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 are the ingredients in this uh let's see the ingredients in this dish are cauliflower, frozen or fresh green peas, onion, tomato, chili, cilantro, a bunch of different spices that should all be fine, oil, lemon juice, salt. That's it. Oh, she can easily make this shelf stable. Easy. And the peas, you should do wasabi peas. Mm-hmm. All right, Dave. Oh, that's a great spin. idea, Dave. See, I'm here to help you. I'm, I always got your back. Aww, yeah, Dave. Not, I just don't have Chris's back. Just anymore. wait till next week when he's like, oh, actually, wasabi peas are not shelf stable. I got you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, that's easy. 
That's oh. too easy. Yeah. Ve- yeah. Wait, you want me to think it's already vegan, already vegan or vegetarian? I think that we should. Yeah. I think he needs to spin again. All right. We should have a meat only one then. <laughs> <laughs> Just replace the cauliflower God, with my nightmare <laughs> cauliflower ear <laughs> meat only <laughs> slow cooker. That'll be fun. Though. That'll be fun. That'll be a fun one. All right, slow cooker, which means I'm definitely gonna get the shittiest one because <laughs> I should have gone to law school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wild, oh card. wild card! You decide what he gets. No, I'm supposed to decide no, what I get, no, but no. I will take strong suggestions. What do you, you don't get to decide? You know what? I am supposed to decide. Oh, you're right. Fine. What do you guys? What would you guys want me to do? I want you to do fusion. No, I'm vetoing fusion on this one. (laughs) I don't want to get canceled Um, for this. I got enough HR. Fusion is really hard. I've done one, Priya. (laughs) It's really, really, really hard. Fusion is the new luck. The most amount of work I've ever put in. Actually, no. (laughs) I put a lot of work into it, though. I would do. I would do microwave only. I think you should do fusion. It's the best content. You are just out to get me. What is the what country would you have me fuse it with if I did fusion? I think the most obvious would be Chinese, and then you could do Indo Chinese. But I feel like is that too easy? Yeah, because like Indo Chinese is its own cuisine already. It was already fused. Um, I could do this, like this. A, the spices are Indian on this. I know. Hmm. You would make about, uh, you could make an amazing Indo Chinese version of this, but yeah, you're right. That could be too easy. How um, about Tex Mex? Oh, good. I like that. I like that because those That's flavors doable, might work. The, doable and a, lot a of, challenge. And those, yeah. those there, there's enough of a a, a spice uh, parallel. Okay. Honestly, I want this one. I would. I would totally. Oh, that sounds amazing. This is right up Pirelli. This is Dallas. This is yeah. a, this is Priya. Yeah. This is a Priya. I will accept, even though it was my choice, I will accept a... You can also choose the country. You can do Vietnam. No, I'll do a Tex-Mex one. I mean, I'll do I'll do a Tex-Mex Kobe Kima winter. <laughs> You guys, like you man. joke, but this is li- this is literally the shit I grew up with. Like yeah. we basically grew. I grew up with Tex Mex Indian. <sighs> oh, I'm not joking, Priya. <laughs> this is uh, all right. I will do it. I'll accept that challenge. I, I don't want to do an easy one just because. What's the point of living? Uh, so next time around on the show, that's what you'll see. You'll see three different versions of this. You'll see a slow cooker version from Dave. You'll see a Tex Mex version from me. And a shelf stable doomsday version, post apocalypse. You can still have deliciousness from Priya Krishna, or maybe not. We'll find out. Uh, I, I think- love this new wheel. It's so great. <laughs> uh, I think that's all we've got. That's all she wrote for this episode. Um, thank you to Priya Krishna, of course, and to Mary Bennett for sending in her Prudence Island stuffies, and to everybody who sends in recipes to Recipe Club and cooks along with us on our Major Double Media Discord. I know a lot of you are. Shout doing out to Gabby for all the work stuff. she did for putting uh, on this wheel together. Big Not shout easy. out to Gabby for hand cutting each of these letters on this wheel. She makes this thing by hand, so big ups to Gabby. And uh, we will talk to you all very soon. Give us five stars, however you rate podcasts. And uh, we love you. Thank you, Priya. Thank you.